So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Well, I really think y'all are going to enjoy this recipe today. It's the cabbage roll casserole. And it's just so good, y'all. Now, this recipe, I, I wanted to tell y'all, it's almost a double recipe. So y'all can make one, uh, like a maybe a 9 by 13 and then you can make one to put in the freezer. I'm going to be using, it's a 9 by 13 but it's a 3 inch deep dish uh, baking pan. So, and it's going to be pretty full. So, you can make two meals out of this. It just depends on how many is in your family. But it's delicious, y'all. And you can make this a low carb by not putting rice in it. When we were on really watching our, our carbs, uh, I would make this dish and no rice. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful meal. So if your family loves cabbage and a good sauce and loves cabbage rolls, they're going to love this casserole. In my Dutch oven back here, I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil because the hamburger meat I've got is the pasture-raised beef, and it doesn't have a lot of fat in it. So I like to add just a little bit of olive oil to it. And I'm using a pound of ground beef. And I'm also going to be putting in here a pound of Italian, mild Italian sweet sausage. You can use whatever kind of Italian sausage you like. Now, this is going to be a lot of meat in there. If you want to be a little bit frugal about it, you can put uh, less meat. We'll talk about that in just a minute when we get our sauce done. Uh, you can put a half a pound of hamburger, ground beef, or and a half a pound of Italian sausage. You can put all pork. You can use uh, uh, ground chicken, just whatever you prefer to use. But I want this to be really meaty, so that's why I'm putting a, two pounds of of meat in it. And you'll see how how meaty and um, how good it's going to look when we get the sauce done. We're going to put just a little bit of salt. I like to season my meat. Anything that I make, I always season my meat. We're going to put some ground pepper. And like I always tell y'all, y'all season your stuff to what you like and how much you like. When I show you my amounts and my seasonings, it's just what, what we prefer and um, what I think tastes good. But it's all good. Okay, we got our beef out there. We got good and brown. I think my pan's starting to get hot. I'm going to use the same pan. I'm going to put me some olive oil in here. Then we're going to start putting our peppers and our onions. I've got about two bell peppers that I chopped up. You can use green bell peppers. You can use any bell peppers you got. And this was called about a medium onion. So I'm going to cook this. Let it saute a little bit. And after it starts, the onions start getting a little bit translucent. I'm going to put me some uh, minced garlic in here. 
probably about a teaspoon or so, and we'll let that cook a little bit. Now in that pot right back there, that's where I got, I got two heads of cabbage, and I just cut them in half, and I got them boiling back there. I've got a green, one medium uh, green cabbage, and I even have a medium, uh, what you might call purple or red cabbage back there. I'm going to mix them up. Red cabbage is is good for you. So, uh, yeah. So that's what's boiling back there. And once it gets good and tender, I'll just turn it off and take my cabbage out. Okay, guys. I think my peppers and onions are about where I want them. I'm going to put a good teaspoon of minced garlic in there. I'm just going to let this cook for about a minute. Okay, let's get our our meat sauce together for our casserole. And everything's coming together here. And I've got a can of crushed tomatoes. I've got two cans of tomato sauce. And I'm going to take these. And I run me just a little bit of water in there. I'm going to stir this. And then we're going to add our seasonings and then we'll add our meat back to it. Okay, I'm going to put a couple teaspoons of salt. teaspoon of black pepper or maybe probably half a teaspoon of black pepper because you may want to add you a little bit about a fourth of a teaspoon of uh, crushed red pepper to it let's see I'm gonna put even though I've got onions in it I'm still gonna add some onion powder probably about a teaspoon I'm going to go ahead and put some roasted garlic powder in it, about a teaspoon. I've got a fourth of a cup of brown sugar. That's going in there. I'm going to put just a little bit of my dried dill out of the garden. Now, you can pick and choose which ingredients you want to put in your meat sauce. You may have your own meat sauce recipe. I've got some thyme. I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon of thyme. I'm going to put probably a tablespoon of parsley flakes. Then I've got my Italian seasoning that I make myself out of all the herbs out of my garden. It's got oregano, rosemary, basil, thyme. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of that in there. Now one of the things I always put in my meat sauce that I put in a lot of other things like my Italian sausages or my homemade uh, breakfast sausage, I always put a little bit of fennel in there. Y'all hang on. About knocked you over. Okay. We're about done here. I'm going to put, I've got some smoked Spanish paprika. It's a sweet, it's a sweet paprika. I'm going to put about a teaspoon. I don't know if that was a teaspoon. Put about a teaspoon in there. Now I'm going to put about a half a cup of beef broth. We're going to stir this up good. Now what I'll do, like I always do, is I'll let this cook a while. And then I come back and I taste it. And then if it needs more or something, I'll just put it in there.
Okay, now we're going to add our meat back to it. And that was quite a bit of meat between our our pound of ground beef and our pound of uh, mild Italian ground sausage. So it'll have plenty of meat in it. And if you didn't want to put that much meat in it, you wanted to maybe make it just a little more frugal where you could take the other half a pound of ground beef and or other half a pound of Italian sausage and do something else with it. You can just put half and half and that way you'll have a pound of meat in your sauce. But you can see how meaty it is. Now, I'm gonna let this simmer before I, I taste it. Let all them spices and stuff kind of infuse in that sauce. But before I put the lid on it, I'm going to put me a bay leaf in here. Now, like I said, all this is optional, but this is just the recipe that I, that I do. And it's always so good. Okay, we're going to put the lid on it and let it simmer. I'm going to say for about 30 minutes, then I'm going to come back and taste it. Okay, our meat sauce is done. I let it simmer probably about 45 minutes. You can let it simmer longer than that if you got the time. I'm going to take these bay leaves out before I forget about it. And I had... A cup of rice that I had cooked earlier so this is cooked rice and I'm gonna add this to my meat sauce and of course we know when you cook a, a cup of rice that it doubles so a couple cups of cooked rice and you can use any kind of rice in here that you want, that you have on hand, or that you like. And I did taste of the, <laughs> the meat sauce like I told y'all I would. And the seasonings were just spot on. They were really good. I think that's enough rice, to tell you the truth. So I've really got... about a cup left in here okay so that looks good our cabbage is cooked and it's so funny because I cooked that green cabbage with the purple cabbage so now that it's all purple cabbage my green cabbage turned purple too but that's okay so now that we've got our filling together and we've got our cabbage cooked now all we have to do is, is to assemble the casserole and get it in the oven and it's only going to have to cook in the oven for about 30 minutes one less okay now all we got left is just to assemble our unstuffed cabbage roll casserole that's kind of hard to say so we got our cooked cabbage, and you can cook this cabbage any way that you choose to cook it. Some people even stick it in the microwave. You just do however it's easiest for you. We're just gonna, now I sprayed my pan. Um, this is a pretty deep pan. It's a nine by 13, but it's uh, deeper than most. Y'all ask me where I get these uh, different speckled enamel bowls and dishes and stuff that I have. And I usually order them, or used to, it's been a while, I order them off of Amazon. But um, there's a place online called, it's I think it's Crow Canyon or Canyon Crow, one or the other. 
If I find the uh, link, I'll leave it below. And they're the ones that make all this beautiful enamel wear. Okay, we've got our layer of cabbage on the bottom. Like I said, I sprayed my pan. Now we're gonna put our meat and rice filling on top of that. And I could eat this filling by itself. It's delicious, y'all. It really is. This is just an easier way then going to the trouble of making cabbage rolls, and I've not had a cabbage roll in years, and I, I've always loved them. <clears throat> okay, now you want to layer cheese. So the, the first layer I'm going to do is Parmesan. You can use whatever cheeses you prefer to use. But on this layer, I'm just going to put a layer of Parmesan. Then we're gonna come back and put another layer of cabbage. And you can make the layers as thick as you want. There's no rules. The only rule there is is just to enjoy cooking and like we always say, make it with love. We have the saying at school, we'll tell somebody that they something they've made at school and we'll say, man, that's really good. And they'll say, yeah, I made it with love. Your pieces don't have to be perfect. You can use your red cabbage or green cabbage, either one. Okay, so here we go again with another layer of our meat filling. And me and Mr. Brown will be eating on this for a couple of days. And if you wanted to, you can make you a smaller portion and then make you like two smaller casseroles and you can freeze this. This does freeze well. And then all you have to do is thaw it out in your refrigerator and just uh, warm it in your oven. If I have a little bit of this meat mixture left, I can, either, I can put it in a container or bag it up and put it in the freezer. Okay, we need no layer of cheese. What I've got here is just leftover cheese I had in the refrigerator. There's mozzarella and there's white cheddar. <clears throat> and I need to get use both of them before I start with any other cheese and open it up. I always like to use what I've got, get rid of it, and try not to waste no more than I have to. So there's a layer of cheese there. Now, I can get another layer on here. And I've got plenty to put on here. That's one thing that I've never grown in my garden is purple cabbage. I always grow Copenhagen, uh, the green, I think I've tried growing uh, red cabbage or purple, whichever you call it, and I didn't have very good luck with it. I don't know why. You want to make sure that after cooking your cabbage that you drain it pretty good because there's quite a bit of liquid in it. I'm going to push that down. I'm just going to fill in the holes. And we're going to get one more layer of meat on here. 
This right here, this casserole would feed a lot of people. I'll put this on a cookie sheet when I put it inside the oven in case we have any runoffs. I don't want it at the bottom of my oven. Now there's also a cabbage roll soup that's really good and it's pretty much just your your rice and your your meat and your cabbage and all that okay so here we go with the last layer I'm going to finish it off with the Parmesan And the rest of my cheese. Because like I said, this is only going to have to be in the oven probably 30 minutes. Everything's cooked. This would be a good meal for a, a Sunday meal. If you got company coming over. Okay. My oven is heating to 350. Like I said, I'm going to put this on a cookie sheet when I put it in the oven in case there's any, any bubble ups over the side. How the oven in 30 minutes. Is that not a pan full of yumminess? We're going to get us some out. And we're going to sit down. We're going to eat some supper. Mr. Brown will be in just a little bit. Now, that cabbage had enough juice in it that it, it did make this just a little bit uh, juicier sauce got a little bit juicier but it's just gonna make it that much better and y'all know the first the first slice out of anything's always the ugliest this is not the prettiest dish once you get it plated up but the taste kindly makes up for the ugliness i guess <laughs> i don't know but it does have quite a bit of juice but i'm going to make some toast up some garlic bread mr brown calls that sopping bread and he'll sop that juice up because that's what he likes to do so i hope y'all enjoyed this recipe enjoyed this video this is some good stuff and remember if you leave the rice out you can make this low carb so it's just another low-carb recipe you can use, too. God bless everybody. We love y'all for always and ever.